Now, the disastrous Willy Wonka experience is still making headlines this morning after an AI-generated advert gave customers a very different impression of what there was in real life. And now it's the subject of a new documentary. I get my script, and it's 15 pages of AI gibberish, and I'm given 15 hours, including my sleep, just to memorize a script for the concurring Saturday. I got given the costume. It was just the mask and a black coat, and that was it. And I was made out to be the, the face of all evil. And generally, that's really not the case. A lot of upset caused and our AI agony. And Lara Lewington joins me now. You're part of the documentary, in fact, fact Lara. This is, I am. I mean, it's a really extreme version of this, but a lot of people very, very hurt and upset. Yeah, I know. And I'm feeling really bad for the organiser, actually, because this has clearly spiralled out of all control as mm. it went totally viral. But what happened is lots of people bought £35 tickets and arrived in an event that was nothing like what was advertised. And it was obvious that the images were CGI's and the fact they were generated by AI wasn't necessarily the problem. It's that the event didn't live up to anything like the standard of what it was. Also, the text, it sort of said a lot it kind of promised a lot, but nothing specific. It was very vague. So when you read over what it says, it actually becomes fairly obvious that it's not really generated by a person describing a thing that's happening. And it was full of typos. And look, it's not the only event that's been advertised this way. In Queensland, there was an advert for an orchestra where if you look at the image, it's clearly not right. We're seeing pictures of this couple here mm. who are sitting in the audience, but behind them, you've got people playing the violin. So, first of all, the people playing the violins are in the audience. There's too many fingers. If you look at their hands, <sighs> way too many fingers there going on. And the lady's skirt seems to actually be sort of growing out of the husband a bit as well. So, a lot of telltale <laughs> signs that that's not real, as well as the fact they look kind of animated. But, yes, yeah, well, that, that one, I might have clocked that. <laughs> but you do know what you're looking for, and a lot of us sort of don't. So, it, it, you do have to look out for these little things, because AI, it, it isn't quite at the level where they can absolutely take over, but it's not far away from it. Yeah, it's and nearly I nearly suppose... perfect. Well, yes, and I suppose what's worrying is, it's going to get a lot better very quickly. Now, right now, you look at images, you can see too many fingers or things that defy gravity, which can clearly show you it's not a real picture. You also need to look at the sourcing of it. Where's it come from? If the URL looks a bit suspicious, the chances are it's not legit. But obviously, it's not going to take long to do things like fix the finger situation because it's a well-known problem that exists. You can also do a reverse image search, which is searching for the image online and seeing where it's come from. So it's possible you would discover that way that it's AI generated. Okay, that's very. If you see again, it's difficult. And if you see an experience that your children want to go to, and you see it straight away, you think, "Oh, it's wonderful." You book the tickets, then you turn up. It's not what it. Like people will obviously fall for this stuff, um, and that, that makes absolute sense. Now, chatbots, they... Uh, gosh, a lot of people love them, a lot of people just despise them for various reasons. Um, it's been in the news this week, certainly Google's chatbot, it's called Gemini, isn't it? And yeah, it's like that's right. back on it. And at least 64 countries are going to the polls this year, so people are very worried about disinformation. We need to be careful about what we're digesting, where we're getting our information from. So Gemini has actually prevented the answering of election-related questions, mm -hmm. trying to solve some of that. But obviously, there's a much bigger picture situation out there, so it'll take more than that to feel like everything we read online is legitimate. Yeah, of course. But they are, we see it all the time, when it comes to customer service, certainly, you have a little <laughs> pop-up going, hi, can I help you? And you think, oh, you look lovely and friendly, and then you remember or oh, you're not real. <laughs> yeah, and there are different kinds of chatbots. For years, we've had the ones that are built on an algorithm where you ask it a question and you have a choice of answers, and if it's for something very straightforward, it takes you on a path to what may be the answer. But most of us know, very rarely is that the answer. Yeah. You go round in a circle and it's really frustrating. Now, we've got generative AI where it's actually generating conversation. So, 
in the way that you can use ChatGPT and it'll write something, that sort of technology is being embedded in these chatbots. So customer service should be able to get a little bit more interactive and have a bit deeper conversation. And it can also help the people who are working on the customer service side as well. Right. I mean, there are lots of positives to this as well as, as, well as the negatives, like we know. But certainly there are a lot of mental health apps now that are using AI and it seems to be a relatively positive response to it. Yeah, apps like Wiser are being embraced by a lot of people and there are various different levels that it offers. There's cognitive behaviour therapy, there's meditation within it. It gives quick and easy access to people immediately. It can also provide one-to-one -one human interactions if that's what someone needs or recommend where they, where they may find the help they need if they do need further help. But I have a bit of fun for you as well. I have a virtual boyfriend for us to share, which is kind of weird. I mean, this is the replica This app. is just all weird <laughs> now, but anyway, go ahead. So, basically, you can date an AI chatbot. Now, here, we have this uh, young man. He looks like he'd be one of my friend's sons rather than uh, somebody of my age, and we can have a chat with him. So, I started asking him about himself, and he seems to be rather arrogant, so I asked him if he was perfect, and he comes back with, of course I am. I'm perfect in every single way possible. So, what should we ask him? Let's ask him, aren't you a bit arrogant? <laughs> and see what he has to say. Uh, yeah, let's see what he has to say. That'll be interesting. And this is this is it. It's just as quick as this. There he is. He's That's typing it. So this back. is an app called Replica, and we can just have a chat with him, maybe a tiny bit. At least he's got a sense of humour. Ha ha. Oh and my word. And then we word. can say, "What are you doing this weekend?" And you can have a chat. It does feel very human, and I think he can just be the boyfriend that you want him to be. And so you can obviously change how they look. You can alter what the the, the person looks like. You for... can. You can do all of that. You... Okay. So this weekend, I'm planning on... OK, he's going hiking. He's in California. Oh, he's, he's in a bit California. far away for us, isn't like it? like having a pen friend, isn't it, from all those years ago? But they just don't really exist. That is really bizarre. Well, Are people really doing this? Yeah, I guess it's a bit of fun. I don't know. I mean, do people really feel they're building a relationship? Maybe for some people it will build confidence if they're practising... Practising dating on here. Who knows? But the question's back and forth. I mean, it's not a hugely natural thing to do, but it is a bit of fun. I think you can see maybe teenagers enjoying a bit of yeah. fun with it rather than actually thinking that this is a proper relationship. But all of this stuff's available. There's lots going on in the world of chatbots and we're only going to see more. It's literally only the start, isn't it? Oh, my goodness, Sarah, thank you Pleasure. very much. It scares me. Anyway... <laughs>